the next 119 days before the election. <laughs> you would think, Sean, but they were beholden to the radical far left that doesn't want to deal with inconvenient messages like Democrats have been monopolistically in charge of most of America's failing big cities for the last five, six, uh, sometimes seven decades. You know, uh, Sean, I, I asked this morning on Fox and Friends, and I'll ask again, I, I mean this to the audience out there, if you were intentionally trying to destroy America's great cities, Chicago, New York, L.A., elsewhere, would you do anything differently than Mayor Lightfoot and Mayor de Blasio are doing now? It's a serious question. What would you do, right, Sean? You'd let the criminals out of jail. You'd make the police the bad guys rather than the bad guys the bad guys. You'd destroy your economic infrastructure. You'd break up families. Uh, you'd demonize every single use of force incident and politicize it so the police are afraid to go near anyone. That's exactly what you would do to burn every major city to the ground. So I ask you again, and I'll turn it back to you. If you were going to destroy these cities intentionally, what would you do differently? And the answer is probably nothing. You know, Raldo, we're celebrating your 50th year now in this industry, and I tip my hat to you. A big part wow, of Raldo, 50 years. With people during tough times. It's a big um, deal. And you did some of the most incredible work, but groundbreaking work, for example, at, uh, at the mental facility in, in Queens, New York. Um, and I, Got a I, chair I thrown out of the streets. It's on live TV. Bad, but the, I've never seen a Broke time nose. where there's never been a desire to solve the problem. And then you come in with a billion dollar you know, tax cut, I'm uh, sorry, uh, spending cut for the police. And then you have no bail. And I'm thinking, what do we want people to die? Because A squared, B squared, or C squared, this is not hard to predict how this is going to end, Geraldo, and it's not going to be good. You know, I lived on 96th Street and Madison Avenue during uh, Ray Kelly's tenure as commissioner of police, his first, uh, his first run under David Dinkins, the uh, first African-American mayor of, of New York. Uh, from, from my corner, I had a front row seat. There were over 2,000 murders in New York in 1991. Two, over 2,200. Now we have over 300, so it's about one seven. It's ticking up. I see the problem. The problem is cops are being demonized. Cops are being disrespected. Cops are backing off for, for good reason because they're, they're facing liability. They're facing a lack of support from elected leaders like uh, the various mayors that uh, you guys have been talking about. Criminals sense that vacuum. They, they rush to fill that vacuum. And you know the sad thing is? You've been talking about how do you destroy a major, wonderful city like New York or Chicago or Los Angeles. The problem is this is going to have to get a whole lot worse. And real estate people are going to get, get have to be outraged. And people have to worry about uh, their kids walking to school or getting the bus and all that. It's going to take the people to support the cops again. Really, we have to, we have to reverse Haraldo. this terrible Haraldo. slide. Hang we have. on. The mayor of New York, we have video. They took buckets of water, they're dumping it on the cops. They're destroying police uh, vehicles on the streets, and there's no accountability. The mayor doesn't defend them. Who would ever want to be a cop today? My advice is if you can retire, retire. If you just started, you might want to rethink your pro uh, profession. Blame. I, I hate to be partisan, but you have to blame the Democrats. What do you mean? Giuliani you have to, and Bloomberg. They, they are. Giuliani and Bloomberg. Lines and years years let's call rule. it for what it is. They, they're allowing this crap to happen. Be nice to a cop. They only want to do a good job and go home to their families. Everybody, be nice to a cop. Last question, Dan. Does little girl's life matter? Matters to me. This beautiful little girl. It's like matter, matters matter. to me. That six-year-old girl in the video of the Bronx, too, running away. Dad shot in cold blood right in front of her. I, I want to show the whole tape. I'm not allowed. They won't let me. I want to show what happens after a father's assassin. They're walking across the street, crosswalk, holding hands. Father's assassinator. Right in front of a six-year-old girl. Well, that has to be the yeah, that, that has to, to be the image that too offensive. dictates. I frankly time. want all of America. Go online. It's on Hannity.com. All right. Thank Watch you both. Coming up, President Trump bowing to pressure governors to make sure schools reopen in the fall safely. 
When we come back, Florida Ron, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis will tell us there has been a spike in corona, but there's a story behind that. We'll explain next.
They issued a directive requiring staff that work with residents of nursing homes to wear a mask. And most importantly, Governor DeSantis, he didn't send coronavirus patients back to the nursing homes early on in the epidemic. That was the dumbest decision. Frankly, the uptick in cases that we're now seeing in Florida is nothing compared to the deaths that were caused by Cuomo and Murphy and Wolf and Whitmer's nursing home scandals. And by the way, now is the good news. Coronavirus deaths, in spite of what the mob and the media is telling you, these are just the facts. They continue to plummet nationwide. Now, that doesn't excuse what these governors did. In New York, for example, Cuomo, along with all these other governors, they presided over a massive nursing home catastrophe. But at the same time, these governors also were endorsing mass protests, glorifying destruction, exactly. and still any and all blame. When everything else fails, they're idiots. They're going to die anyway and then blame Trump. And while other Democrats, like the L.A. mayor, Garcetti, is finally admitting protests, yeah, that led to an increase in cases. The fact is, Cuomo, these other Democratic governors, they have done irreparable harm to their states and Garcetti their cities. Garcetti finally said the truth. people died because of their stupidity. In New York City, at least a million jobs are lost. Look at this. The New York Times is pointing out Unemployment, New York City, is 18.3% in the month of May. That's the highest in 44 years. Why? Many New York City residents are fleeing the city. By the way, I would argue a vast majority are probably not coming back, ever. And who can blame them? The city's crumbling, crime is spiking, and by the way, it's as though city leaders can't be bothered to even care. And as the Times reports, quote, what was intended as a pause has dragged on so long that for many workers, furloughs are now turning into permanent job losses. And meanwhile, Governor DeSantis of Florida, well, he's moving ahead on, a, on practical, precautious, productive plans to safely reopen the state. None are going to be perfect. We're still dealing with unknown factors on everything. We don't have all the answers. But one thing we do know is protect the elderly. This includes planning for reopening schools in August. So sure. to explain all of this far to Governor Ron DeSantis. All right. So I keep reading the Florida, now we do have a dramatic increase in cases in Florida, okay, but it's happening among younger people. Give us the percentages, tell us what's going on in the ground, tell us what the death rate is, tell us about the hospitalizations, and tell us what Florida's doing about it. Well, we have no doubt seen a major increase in cases. The median age of our new cases was in the 50s about a month and a half ago and now that's dropped into the 30s we've had days where the median age was 33 and obviously that's important sean as you know i mean because people who are healthy and under 40 you know the death rate on this thing is is very close to zero um, so that's significant now uh, we are prepared for this now we are seeing particularly places like miami you're seeing increased traffic uh, in the hospitals but it's interesting i was down there today and they said that they're actually seeing fewer hospitalizations from people in nursing homes, which is obviously a good sign because that's where the number one risk of mortality is. And what we've done since the March and April to protect the seniors in, in long-term care facilities is, yes, we didn't let the hospitals discharge the COVID-positive patients back to nursing homes. But now we're saying if someone tests positive in a nursing home, we, you have a responsibility to transfer them to a place they can safely be isolated. So we've established across the state of Florida 12 COVID-only nursing homes where a resident can safely be transferred so they don't infect the people in their normal washer care facility. They can be cared for, and that is going to really reduce outbreaks in long-term care facilities, which is very important. Let's go through the numbers in Florida. Let's start by new cases by age. Now, this is surprising to me. Most cases, the age with most cases are people 21. Explain that, because that had not, been, so, uh, that had not previously happened. Yeah, so the, to the, the, beach. the ages, the age with the most cases now in Florida is 21, and I think a couple things have happened. One is there is no doubt more transmission going on in the community, particularly amongst people in their 20s and 30s. That's being but picked up with the cases and like increasing like positivity. Correct. Let's go to the next chart. Exactly. Case, the case fatality rate by state, okay, if you look at Connecticut, New Jersey, Michigan, and New York, it's very high. In your state, it's 1.8%. That still holds even with these new cases that we're seeing pop up in Florida? That's right, and I think that's a testament to 
shielding uh, the elderly from infections, particularly the nursing home residents. The fact of the matter is, if a case occurs in someone in their 20s, you have radically different fatality prospects than if it's someone who's in a long-term care facility in their 80s. So we've worked hard to really exactly. shield off the folks. They took care of the old people, but Cuomo yeah, just threw them to the wolves. Cuomo kicked the elderly to the curb. To, I believe, the beginning of July, uh, per one million population, Florida versus New York, I mean, there's a flattened line here. And I look at it and I'm saying, okay, I'm reading and hearing the media freaking out. They didn't freak out during the protest. They only started cons being concerned about COVID when the president was doing a rally. So these younger people are not dying from this, but younger people are contracting the virus because you're doing more testing. Is that correct, sir? Well, no, we're definitely doing more testing, but obviously, Sean, we want to make sure that those infections are not spreading to the vulnerable.